it's the middle of September, and just like everybody, whitetail is on the brain 365 days a year pretty much, but it's uh, at the forefront of our thought process right now. And a lot of the videos that you see me uh, bringing to you guys obviously have a lot to do with um, habitat creation, how to manipulate habitat, how to um, positively um, impact your your hunt on your private land and also um, out on uh, public ground when you're hunting, um, you know, how to get in, how to get out and uh, to, to keep that pressure low, especially on small parcels all across the country. Um, that's the platform of most of the, the videos that you see, but uh, see me doing. But going back to uh, my roots, there's uh, a topic that, that I like to, that I often um, speak with folks on that, um, that I've been wanting to, to uh, step back and kind of give some insight, if you will, on um, how to go about it. And that topic is the topic that we're going to uh, chat about tonight. And that is, is a outfitter uh, right for you? And how to choose an outfitter and how to even start the process of making sure that an, uh, a experience with an outfitter is positive. Now, if you guys know me on a personal level, you'll know that my outdoor career started as a, as a guide in the outfitting industry in Pike County, Illinois, born and raised. I'm um, hunting, obviously, and had the opportunity to go down um, at a young age and uh, start guiding right out of uh, high school and a couple of years out of high school. And that's when my, my outdoor career started. So I've seen, um, I've seen both many sides of the outfitting spectrum since then, um, going from Illinois to northeastern Wyoming, uh, going from there to Colorado, uh, West Central Colorado, and then um, back here to Michigan, and then obviously running my own hunts um, down in southwestern Wisconsin as an outfitter um, of my own, and uh, and then running you know turkey hunts and everything else that comes with that here in the state of Michigan. So with that said, um, there's many many things that tie into making a experience with an outfitter successful. What I've learned along the way is that not, not everyone is fit to hunt with an outfitter. And the reason for that is, is the biggest reason that I see is the expectation of, of either being um, given the wrong expectation set to you from an outfitter or you as a hunter um, having having the wrong expectation when you're going into uh, when you're going into their world. So tonight we're going to talk about three ways to make your experience uh, great with an outfitter and if an outfitter is even even a fit uh, for you to begin with. So we're going to start with the the idea of how to figure out if an outfitter is the right path for you to choose. Now if you're coming from a state um, such as Michigan, such as Pennsylvania, um, New Jersey, New York, and if, you're, if that's the, uh, the area that you're tuning in from or your specific area that you hunt is across the country, and there's many of them, uh, that is, as, is, uh, you could deem as high pressure. You have a, hunter, a hunter's mentality about you that's different than, um, than a hunter that is uh, in the mid, you know that that's hunts in the Midwest, born and raised and hunting the Midwestern low pressure deer. Whether that's uh, the state of Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, um, that is a different mentality because of what you were brought up in, what you were, what you're comfortable hunting, and the deer are on a totally different platform as well. That uh, that mindset is what you need to keep in mind when you're thinking about if you haven't. Or if you have in the past, if you're looking at a new state, going to an outfitter. That is the biggest step that you have to think of is it has to be a trust issue. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to put yourself um, in the position that you are comfortable going from your world as a high pressured state um, or a or a area of the, the, the uh, whitetail range that is not as... Um, maybe as, as punctual, maybe isn't as, as frugal as what could possibly happen in a low-pressured state where you are traveling to 
to or from a high pressured state into one of those areas you have to be able to open your mind and be willing to adapt to that area that request sounds pretty simple but I've been on both sides of that I've been the hunter and I've also been the guide and the outfitter so that request sounds pretty simple but it, it's not handled that way most of the times on both sides of the of the uh, platform of trying of, of being an outfitter or hunting with an outfitter so the first thing that you have to do that I recommend that you do is you bring yourself to the plate and you're honest with yourself and or the outfitter and the outfitter that you're going to hunt with you have to know where you come from you have to know what your expectations are and you have to know going into it what you want out of the hunt and the biggest this the biggest disconnect that I see guys is the outfitter it does not know the ins and outs or the outfitter doesn't choose to know the ins and outs of your passion of your goal that is the disconnect because in an outfitter world especially um, in an out, outfitting situation that the outfitter runs high numbers you um, there's a lot of a lot of clients out there across the country sad but very true that become a number and that's when outfitting experiences uh, turn ugly on a hunt that you're um, you're saving for you're geeked up about you're amped up about you and your buddy are going together what I highly recommend doing is I, I recommend honing that down to an outfitter that you feel before you even book the hunt that you feel 100% comfortable with not only the outfitter himself his guides and the land and the, and the expectation of and the quality of deer what you can expect to to hunt I find as a outfitter as a, a past outfitter and guide what I find is um, the wrong expectation is not handled up front it's not a um, it's not a conjoined force going into it and before the hunter even arrives at the camp the hunt is is blown and I can honestly say that now looking back years in the past uh, on uh, great hunts and and hunts that went south and I can I can tell you up front that that hunt um, those hunt hunts were were uh, destined for destruction before the before the hunter even hit the lodge so the second thing we're going to talk about is having a realistic expectation you have to you have to be able to understand that you are entering into a a business when you choose to hunt with an outfitter you um, you know the the number just becoming a number sounds um, harsh but you're you're a number within a um, with a within a set goal from the outfitter that they want to run per year so it's not that you're a number but your week your um, place in that order has a lot of to a quality outfitter has a lot of power with planning um, and having not only your hunt be successful but also the hunts in their future be successful so what I have experienced um, firsthand and what I've also experienced um, as a hunter um, is that what happens is is the um, especially this day and age trail cameras all the technology that we have out there and I watch it on social media and I watch it all the time and there will be a point when the uh, when the outfitters realize this um, that are doing it but the topic that we're on right now is the outfitters not gauging themselves not setting a a week-to-week -week platform or a goal on where they need to be so the the hunters today are as successful as the hunters two months from now and what's happening is and when one thing to to watch one thing to to ask is where where your number where your hunt your hunt number where your week throughout the fall fits in and that will um, not only answer questions on when should you be there it should it should also resonate within you about your expectations of the hunt because what's happening is especially like I said the trail cameras is these folks are are 
diving into the first week of season. And because I have a uh, past in, in outfitting and guiding and also being from and my business is focused around high pressure hunting, I am able to connect those dots from the outside looking in and it's a path of destruction. The problem with that is, is you, the hunters, are in that line of destruction and uh, the hurricane is coming through, um, so to speak, and you're going to get caught in the crossfire. So that that um, question, that num hunter number, that um, plan has to be set in place. And then you, as the hunter, have that expectation going into the hunt where you can honestly tell yourself that if it's a uh, second week of no or second week of October hunt and you're in the state of Illinois that the the myth of the October low if it's if it's said to you that the deer aren't moving and um, you know there's nothing that they can do about it the fact of the matter is is that you are in a high pressured spectrum that the outfitter didn't plan for now whether weather um, unforeseen weather storms um, all that stuff can play into it most hunts are five to seven, five to seven days, four to five days, whatever the case is um, across the country that can all vary. But the, the platform that an outfitter should set, the expectation that they should set is something that's very, very um, missed and not communicated with or to your hunters, which in turn, um, you know, sets a hunter up for, for um, disaster because they have this expectation that they've set in their mind that they've seen uh, prior hunts, prior weeks before them be successful. And maybe 10 out of 10 guys in camp, let's say, 12 out of 12 guys in camp, let's say, and then all of a sudden their week, which is week four, comes up the center of October and they're not seeing any deer. And the reason for that, guys, is, is it's pressure. So knowing that going into it, that's where a quality outfitter stands apart from just a outfitter in the Midwest or, or here in the Northeast or wherever the case is, that's where an outfitter stands apart, a quality outfitter stands apart from just an outfitter. And he will be honest with you and talk you through that situation about choosing those dates and what to expect. Last topic here that I want out of the three that I want to touch on is as a hunter, you have to realize that you have to, it's a give and take. It's a, it's a give to, to, move, to go away from your home base on all of the, the tricks and strategies and tactics and food plots and everything that you've that you've um, you know followed along to guys in the industry such as myself or and you have you know implemented food plots and you've got your, your personal farms all set up and you know how to hunt them and when you move to a new location as far as going to an outfitter that's not normally the uh, the case of how they hunt they know the area they know how how to hunt they know if they can hunt their, they know if they can hunt their uh, food plots or their destination feed locations or if they shouldn't be like we do in, a high, in high pressured states. Is I see a lot of folks that I'm ta talking with that have the uh, bad taste in their mouth about outfitters because the outfitters over pressured their, um, their um, areas and over pressured their farms. But what happens is when they start talking to me on a honest approach, an unbiased approach, what I'm able to connect with those folks on is this. A uh, very high percentage of the time when, uh, when a client tells me that they went with outfitters or they're going with outfitters or the reason that they're with a new outfitter is because of the outfitter that they were with before overran their stands and there was a path to their stand and um, they could just tell they got busted. The deer would come in, uh, you know, pick them out of tree stands. And they felt that they just, they know that them stands were overhunted. Now, folks, these are the same hunters that are explaining this to me. And that are also, that I'm standing on their, their farm or a farms that I have uh, worked with them on, the properties that they are pressuring, over pressuring themselves. So if you have an expectation of an outfitter, you know, and to not pressure their stands and you're going to pay them your service. Um, you're going to pay him for their service and go, go, go down there and then be upset because you feel like they overpressured their farms. I, 
I strongly, strongly encourage you before you go with an outfitter that you make your, your hunting, your farm, your parcel that you're hunting, whether that's a leased or a owned parcel or out on public ground, your way of hunting unpressured because it's not just as it's not fair for a hunter or an outfitter not to tell you um, about their numbers and about uh, you know where you fall into that spectrum of of a shot opportunity let's say or or an honest opinion about should you be there the middle of October should you be there the first week should you wait until the rut if you are coming back and one of the checklists the negative checks on that checklist from that outfitter uh, the review if you will is that their farm is overpressured their farms that you hunted were overpressured and you come back to your farms and you're hunting your destination feed locations you're, you're hunting over your food plots you're going to the same tree stand in and out you're not you're not worried about your access you're not worried about getting out of there your exits you're not paying attention to scent control and you're over pressuring your small parcels or your parcels that you're you're you know you're that you're hunting in a high pressured state or any state but usually what happens is you know hunters come from high pressured states with low success to the midwest let's say with lower pressure and higher success but if you're coming from one of those states and folks um i'm here to tell you that out of the two th over 2000 clients that i've guided and over 200 hunts that i've had on camera that pretty much i'm i'm here to tell you that the expectation of hunters from high pressured states they are are asking you're you're pretty much killing a uh, outfitter you're you're jabbing an outfitter with a with a double edged sword and that's that's not fair to you or it's not fair to your outfitter as well so but this is what i highly recommend i highly recommend taking those three things into consideration one being honest two making that connection with your with your outfitter and knowing you know you know getting a a honest uh, opinion about when you should be there, where your, your money is well spent. And then the last thing is being honest with yourself about where your, your professionalism, let's say, is or your platform of um, where you're at, where you're at on that level as far as going to an outfitter. And then if it's not what it's what you thought it was supposed to be, making sure that you when you are hunting before you go, you're at the top of what you're, you're reviewing um, your, your outfitters at. And I think once you connect all those things together, you will have a, a have a uh, better success. You will have a better, if you're hunt, it's free range, guys. Um, if you're going with an outfitter, that's free range, low fence, especially for whitetails, there is no guarantee, especially in any hunting, but especially in the whitetail woods. Um, if you're going to an outfitter, you have to remember, like I said, you're going to a business. A couple things to keep in mind, like I said before, you're going to a business. Um, you are a number. You just have to pick the outfitter that appreciates your number in line and that manages um, their hunts from the first hunt until the last hunt of the season. Them are the things that you have to find in an outfitter. And then you have to be honest with yourself about where you are at compared to where you're gauging um, your outfitter. And if you are at, if you are coming from a high pressured state and you feel like you are doing everything under the sun correct, you're not overpressuring your farms, you know your exits, your entrances and exits, those are things that you're going to be talking to your outfitter about way before your hunt even starts. And a good outfitter or a, the guide, maybe the lodge manager, whoever it is that you're going to be um, hunting it, hunting with, is it already knows that platform, so he knows not to take you to those destination feed locations. He knows not to, unless he can sh prove to you that, you know, hey, this buck has been here and all of a sudden he showed up between hunts and he's been there two or three days and I, I know we can kill him. But be respectful for the out, for yourself, for your outfitter, and the future hunts that have to follow you coming down the turnpike. And a lot of times it's that old theory, you know, you point one finger at somebody and there's three pointing back at you. I'm here to just help educate folks before they go to outfitters. I'm not saying that outfitters are always right. I'm not saying that hunters are always right. What I'm saying is, is polish that, make that connection before you go. And it's just some simple, it's just simple questions that, um, that, you know, answers, questions and answers um, that you have to answer to yourself. Are you doing things right before you can ask an outfitter, you know, to do things right at the, at the end of it. So in review, 
take into consideration these uh, three topics that we spoke of tonight when you're looking to to connect with an outfitter and I think that will help make the make the answer the, the question is an outfitter right for you or or should you even be looking towards uh, booking a hunt with an outfitter thanks guys